Today in the news, I rant a little about a post, Intel delays the lineup, and we had BlizzCon. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. So their new chief performance strategist, Ryan Shrout, which is also the founder of the website PC Perspective, wrote a piece about core scaling and gaming performance on Medium. Basically, he dives into the question of how many cores do you need for gaming? The testing was fairly straightforward. They took an eight core 9900K locked at four gigahertz with hyper threading disabled. Then they tested six games at four, six and eight cores. They also did the uh, same test with the 9980XE locked at 4 GHz also with HT disabled and tested 12 games at 8, 12 and 16 cores. In half of the games tested with the 9900K, going from 4 to 6 cores made a difference, but from 6 to 8 things stayed the same. The other games like Assassin's Creed, Ashes and Hitman 2 all continued to scale very well up to 8 cores. Above 8 cores though, while some games performed better at 12 and 16 cores, the actual difference is quite minimal at about 5% better performance on average and going from 12 to 16 cores, some games even lost a little bit of performance. Now this is something that mostly everyone knew, I mean I expected it, but this article feels a lot like throwing shade at AMD's highest end while belittling their mid-range CPUs. Statements like uh, adding core count just because you can doesn't result in better performance or just the fact that he is targeting 12 and 16 cores, which is no coincidence, it just feels cheap, and I'm not the only one that thinks so. 8 cores is perfect for gaming now, just as 4 cores was perfect for gaming up to around 3 years ago, and the 9900KS is the fastest for the job right now, but what about in 3 years? If someone spends $500 plus on a CPU right now and wants to keep it for a long time, what's to say games won't scale up? I mean, they have been for the last decade, I still have my almost 3 year old 8-core 1700 and I'm not looking to upgrade. Back then the Intel argument was 4 cores is the best for gaming because the 7700K which was their top of the line was a quad core. Plus once we move up in resolution the CPU doesn't matter as much. Intel will also have a 10-core CPU lineup on their next generation so what's going to be their excuse then? We added 2 cores because we can and it does result in better performance? Posts like these will come back to bite them in the ass and they are so predictable. They should just not make them. Anyways, what do you guys think about this Medium post and the testing? The link is down below, so go check it out, come back here, and uh, leave a comment if you want to. Speaking of high core count CPUs, Intel has delayed their HEDT line of CPUs. Back in September, the company said that the 10th generation based on Cascade Lake X would come in October. We're in November now and nothing is out yet. It seems like the delay might be caused by one of two things. It could be caused by Intel's continuous supply shortage or it could be because they want to see what AMD's third gen Threadripper will have to offer. And maybe they'll tweak their lineup accordingly. Some outlets speculate that a secondary price cut might be underway. Personally, I think that while Intel's PR and marketing is absolute garbage, they do seem to finally understand that their pricing is wrong. I think that the whole whole 10th generation and not just the HEDT will probably see a price cut. Moving on, it looks like Microsoft isn't done with their web browser. After killing off Internet Explorer, creating the Edge browser, then switching from their own engine to the Chromium one, there was one aspect of their old Explorer that just lingered, and that was the E. Well, Microsoft is finally switching it up with a brand new logo for the web browser. They actually had a whole Easter egg with puzzles and mini games for their insiders, but they finally revealed the final design. It looks quite cool, but it's just gonna stay another icon on my uh, taskbar that I'm never gonna use. In BlizzCon news, the fans finally got what they wanted. During the opening ceremony, we got our first look at Diablo 4, which looks darker than ever, World of Warcraft, Shadowlands, and Overwatch 2. We also had the Overwatch World Cup, which was actually pretty amazing to watch. I mean, my country tanked, with Canada only managing one victory out of the 12 matches played in the group stages, but the US won the cup against South Korea and China. That's insane seeing how easy it was for South Korea to crush everyone in the past years. Anyways, Overwatch 2 is coming and it's basically Overwatch except with better graphics and a PvE. Both games will share the same multiplayer. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the weekend news. If you got any questions or concern, you can put them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, guys. One of my lights smells burnt. That's not good.